A new Martin Scorsese gangster film starring Robert De Niro and Al Pacino is being released this week, but almost every Australian cinema is boycotting it. The Irishman is a passion project for Scorsese, but it couldn't have been completed without the involvement of the streaming giant Netflix. The film will be available for Netflix's Australian subscribers four weeks after its official cinema release. It is the latest flashpoint in a growing feud between cinema operators and streaming services. Let's get more from film critic Travis Johnson. Thank you for coming in. Hey, thanks for having me. Let's go back. What right. is the size of the impact of these streaming services on cinema? Uh, I think it's been massive. Uh, but I think in the case of The Irishman, the problem is that it's both a theatrical release and a streaming release, and the window between theatrical and streaming is really narrowed. Like, it used to be that a film would come out in the cinema, and then, like, a year later, you'd be able to get it on VHS or disc or whatever. But the gap for The Irishman is about 30 days, which isn't a lot of time for theatres to just pull some money out of the property to actually, you know, earn off it, uh, which means they've got to ask themselves, what is the value in putting on this film? They could put on something else, which could run for longer, which could, you know, just basically put more butts on seats. Why is Netflix bankrolling a film that is going to the cinema first? Uh, well, first of all, there's the prestige. I mean, this is a Scorsese film. He is one of the greatest filmmakers ever to expose celluloid to light. He's a big get. Um, it needs a theatrical run in order to qualify for the Oscars, and Netflix is very Oscar-hungry. They want the prestige of a big award season. Also, you've got to understand that, because it, it's a Scorsese flick, like, that's got a long tail. People are going to be watching that for years down the track. You know, there's never going to be a time when no one's going to be watching the Scorsese film. So even though they paid a lot of money for it, I think it'll pay off in the long run. But I guess in the end, it comes down to who's going to go to the cinema to pay to see a film that they will be able to see as part of their subscription service at home on the couch in just four weeks. Well, there's me, there's David Stratton, there's Margaret Pomerantz. Um, people who love cinema. Now, here's the thing. I've seen the film. It is incredible. It is three and a half hours long. Go to the toilet before you get in there. Don't drink a lot. Uh, but it is a, a beautiful theatrical experience. There is still, despite, I don't care how big your TV is, how great your surround sound is, what your soundbar does, and the fact that you can pause and, and take phone calls and muck about on your phone, there is no better way to see a film, almost any film, than in the cinema. And Scorsese shoots for a theatrical exhibition experience. So when you're sitting there for three and a half hours and you feel it, uh, you, you're just drowning in, in pure cinema. The visual, the, the spectacle, the way he frames the way he moves the camera, the performances from great actors like De Niro and Pacino and Joe Pesci, who we haven't seen on the screen for years. You know, it's wonderful. Like, it's a great experience. And there's an audience out there who are, who are thirsty for that, for something of substance, of, of, of worth, of merit. And it sounds like I'm bagging out Mar Marvel films, but I'm not. And, yeah, we'll turn up for it. And I'll probably turn up for it again. Now, Martin Scorsese said that Netflix really saved this film. He didn't think he could make it without them. Do you think that means that cinema that is resistant to the streaming sites getting involved at the front end of movie um, showing is, is just going to have to get on board with these streaming sites becoming more involved in those first release it's, films. It's really interesting, isn't it? I mean, the advantage of going to something like Netflix is they're very much playing the auteur game, whereby they, they are going to let filmmakers of Scorsese's caliber, and there's a few others out. David Finch is doing stuff for Netflix. Um, we've just had The King by David Michaud, um, who they kind of get a blank check and get to make the movie they actually want to make. Um, theatrically, you've got to worry about broad appeal. Um, and something like The Irishman may not play in China, where uh, well, that's a massive market now, and every major studio tentpole is very aware of the, the need to transgress cultural boundaries, tell a simple, accessible story, which is going to appeal to a, a broader audience as possible. Um, I think uh, that the theatrically they might want to uh, appeal to filmmakers like Scorsese and Yu Coppola's and whoever, but... Financially, it may not be viable, particularly at the budgetary level that uh, The Irishman exists at, which was $169 million, plus Netflix paid $105 million for the rights. So that's $274 million for a three-and-a-half-hour-long gangster flick about old men. You know, that's not going to compete in the theatrical space with Avengers. It's just not. Maybe it should, but let's be realistic, it ain't. So it's a really hard question to answer. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Travis Johnson, thanks for coming in. Hey, thanks for having me.